Welcome, welcome. Hi, I'm Alan Carl, and welcome to the Journeys webcast. This is episode 25. Can you believe that? 25. Uh, and they keep getting, wow, oh, the first ones were great. They keep getting better, though. I'm so excited to have you tuning in today, the week of Thanksgiving here in the United States. So uh, everybody is um, gearing up for what is going to be uh, the first the first of a challenging holiday season, given the given the continued uh, outbreak of the uh, of the coronavirus. But um, I'm wishing all of you a, a happy holiday, happy Thanksgiving, and and thanks for tuning in. I'm really excited uh, about Marana today, uh, my guest um, from Croatia, but t- dialing in today from Boston. Um, this is, this is going to be really interesting. Um, you know, and, and as I was looking at those 25 episodes that we've done, this is the third one that we are uh, have a little bit of a Croatian slant. So Croatian's getting kind of a, a big hat tip here um, from the Journey's webcast. Um, we had Ashley, uh, who uh, is a TV producer, Emmy host. She actually w- came in runner-up for what Croatia's uh, uh, top um, singing competition show. If you remember that, that was back in uh, May, I believe, that, that she was on. And then, of course, we had Matthew and Shereen from Exotic Wine Travel, who... Uh, in, in their travels got kind of locked down in um, in Croatia. But uh, so we'll, we'll get more into Croatia. I just wanted to just check in with you and see how you're feeling. Um, you know, what are your plans for um, for Thanksgiving? Um, please use the chat here. A couple things. If for whatever reason during the webcast, the, the picture freezes or the sound c- crackles or something like that, there's a um, there's a little uh, it, it should be like a little red a button at the top of your screen that will allow you to reconnect. You click it once and then it says reconnect and you click it again. So uh, that should bring everything back. Also over here in the chat uh, room, please introduce yourself. Let us know where you're coming in. We've got, um, hi, Carol, nice to see you. You're from, I, you know, I always love these these places in Croatia and over in the, in the uh, Balkans where there are no vowels. Kirk. I, I have to say Kirk, you know, it's, it's, uh, but, um, I never got there. I, I, uh, I, I, I wanted to go definitely is on my list to go as well as many of the others. I got to Vis, Comisa, but nonetheless, um, welcome. Nice to have you, Carol. We, uh, we're going to be talking, um, about your homeland and see your dual citizen. Hey, so, um, I just want to do my update because people who've been following the webcast know that I had that bout with vertigo. So it seems to be a, 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 a common thing at the opening of these um, webcasts that I give you a little update. Well, you know, I still feel like I'm, I take two steps forward and then I feel good. And then I, then I take a step back. And um, so it's still, even now I feel a little dizzy. Um, you know, nothing spins anymore. I don't get the nausea. Uh, but I'm doing exercises. I, I I talked about this Alter G, this anti gravity treadmill uh, that the doctor suggested I I um, I go and do gaze stabilization exercises. Essentially, go jogging on the treadmill while staring at a magazine and um, looking at small objects on the page for a minute at a time, and then shifting my gaze to another one. Um, so, and then there's a whole list of other things, but I won't get into it, um, there, but, uh, hopefully this will go away and maybe it's going to just wait until the coronavirus goes away. I don't know. So I'm not riding the motorcycle. I am riding my bicycle and, uh, you know, trying to make the best of, uh, of what I can do, but, uh, Let's uh, let's get into let's get into today's um, today's celebration of Croatia in wine and culture. Um, and uh, Marina, I, I hope I say that right. She'll correct me. And Bagur, um, hopefully I'm saying that pronunciation is not going to be my best uh, uh, best fat, uh, asset here today. But nonetheless, she was born and raised in Croatia in a small town of Metković. It's in the uh, Dubrovnik Neretva county there in Dalmatia, along the Dalmatian coast. For generations, her family contributed and enjoyed the rich culture of the region where Marina not only breathed in the rosemary and lavender scented fresh breeze of that Dalmatian air, but also the wine must of a grape harvest and the salty aromas of the Adriatic Sea. Marina nurtured her passion for, her passion for Croatian culture at home where locals passed down tradition through stories and song. In fact, her parents preserved and refined uh, many traditional dances, songs, and costumes um, there in the Nerepa uh, region, while her got, where her grandfather tended to his acres of Plavitz Mali vineyards. It's a unique grape. We're going to talk about that today. Was a young girl, Marina helped harvest those grapes and then transported them by donkey cart 
yeah, to his winemaking, Canoba. She served as a female dancer in the Metkovich folk dance group in high school and in college joined this prominent Zagreb dance group performing in numerous uh, festivals and concerts throughout Croatia and at least a half a dozen uh, international tours as well. Her journey eventually brought her to the United States where today she calls Boston area home. There she still holds on to her cultural heritage as a member of the pa pa uh, Pajdasi? Uh, Padashi. Anyway, we'll get that abandoned choir focused on those Croatian folk songs from, that her parents had helped preserve. Plus, for the last 14 years, she has served as president of the um, New England Friends of Croatia, a nonprofit focused on creating awareness about Croatia in New England, and as a member of the Association of Croatian American Professionals, where she participates in the medical task force. Though among the many things Marina does to keep busy and challenged, most recently, she and her husband founded Croatian Premium Wine Imports, an importer, distributor, and direct sales firm focused on educating people about and promoting and selling Croatian wine. After a year, uh, after a global, <laughs> I can do this, right? Uh, after a career in global marketing communications, Morena turned her entrepreneurial spirit to founding a Boston-based Contexo Group. It's a consultancy for a wide variety of tech-inspired startup companies. She has served on a number of advisory boards. Look at this, man. This is incredible. The Capital Network, the MIT Enterprise Foreman, and the Massachusetts Technology Leadership Council. And for 10 years or more, she continues to serve as the course co-director at the joint Harvard and MIT Division of Health Sciences and Technology, a course called the Enabling, Enabling Technology Innovation in Healthcare System and the Life Sciences. I bet she has something to say about the uh, new vaccines that are... Uh, soon to be on the uh, thing. Marina holds a master's degree in international trade and marketing from the University of Zagreb School of Economics in Croatia, and she has completed a strategic business leadership program from Columbia University. She's uh, And she's a skier. Look at this, Professional Ski Instructors of America, the Association of Croatian American Professionals, and is involved in a number of nonprofits. Hey, welcome to the webcast journeys, Marina. Did I say that right? I mean, how, did, how is that? Thank you. You're, well, I mean, I'm not sure you're talking about me, but, <laughs> but uh, you pronounce my name very well. Thank you. My mother would be very proud of what you just said. Oh, fantastic. Wow. So I just want to go right into this um, course thing you've been doing for 10 years with MIT and Harvard. That's very impressive. And, sure. and right now, um, you know, I'm sure you watch closely um, what's going on with the development of this uh, vaccine, as well as some of these uh, uh, cocktails, you know, the, the yeah. antibody um, uh, cocktails like our, our president took and seemed to help him. How, how, did, how did health, you know, with all this creation, folklore and uh, health and medical um, come into, come into your life there? Oh, that's, that's a very good question. It was, um, um, I mean, I, I was working in business. I, I was uh, working with a global, large uh, agency, um, wasn't global actually. Originally there was only 20 of us when we started and, um, you know, through, um, um, acquisitions or organic growth uh, became a global agency. And uh, from technology, I have slowly moved to be working more and more with um, medically oriented, health oriented companies because it became more interesting to me. It was more than just bits and bytes. I mean, I could um, uh, talk about and understand what was going on on some level, but it was actually, um, um, it was the, the idea of helping people that has kind of made me stick to that from from early on. So I sort of st started working more and more on the health tech companies, and that's how I got connected with uh, Professor Locke, who um, who was uh, originally uh, uh, starting uh, the course. Um, uh, by the way, the course has uh, uh, stopped a few years ago, but. Uh, um, one of the things that's really wonderful in the medical industry, at least in the Boston area, is that um, the innovation level, it, it, it is a bad word to use these days, but it is truly contagious. Uh, when, you work, <laughs> <laughs> when you work with people who are entrepreneurs and they really want to accomplish something and truly believe in it, um, uh, there is the element of, you know, what are they actually working on? Um, in this case, as you were saying, uh, it was the development of the vaccine. Um, or, or it could be something, uh, you know, that's more mechanically uh, uh, oriented or, or uh, uh, 
uh, drugs or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's the, the community of everybody that works together that actually makes it possible to reach a point where you can make an impact with it. And uh, that's what really got me into that. Um, I mean, Boston is a buzz with innovation in general. So that's been always uh, absolutely wonderful to participate. Yeah. You know, the you, you, you know, people um, uh, that are in the tech business that are, are, are following uh, innovation and technology and life sciences, med medicine, uh, certainly are aware of that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not just California. In Silicon Valley, uh, you know, there's there's hotbeds that throughout our uh, our, our great nation, and that uh, you know Route 128 tech corridor uh, maybe doesn't get as much um, notice as the as the as the communities north of me here, but for certainly um, Boston has a great reputation. And look, MIT, Harvard, uh, yeah. yeah. And it, I mean, if you talk to any of of the people that are uh, engineers and with engineering background, uh, whether it's biomedical or, or um, uh, software or whatever, they would tell you that they are really the center. But yeah, that's, a, you know. That you should go west coast. <laughs> east coast west <laughs> well, you know you have mit harvard we've got caltech and stanford i i don't know you know but they're all great schools oh, and okay. uh yeah. and bringing out just great stuff but, but let's go back to croatia because i want to talk about your journey okay obviously you're 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 so connected to the tech industry in boston and and to the um you know, but you you do have a real passion for your heritage your cultural heritage um when did you um decide to to move from the lovely Dalmatian coast to you know to to, to Boston or United States sure. how did that come about so I came originally on a student exchange program and uh, that unfortunately was just around the time when I was expecting the war to start in that area and um, um, I was really torn about what to do because I loved the United States. I mean, I made some really great friends here um, and uh, uh, I had a, a internship uh, here and uh, um, at one point went back uh, home to uh, graduate. And then the second time when I, when I came back, I was working with already people I knew and, and totally understood the um, environment here in terms of innovation. Um, and it was certainly appealing, but I missed home and I, and I really wanted to be living, um, living uh, back home. Uh, but um, uh, the war itself just uh, was so daunting and I knew that I was sort of a ticket to my whole family out if I needed to get them. And mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what made me make a very difficult decision. I mean, I'm now glad that I did, but <laughs> at the time yeah. it was, it was difficult. So, so, so you did, uh, with your family, um, you know, in the, in the heavy uh, wake of that, of that, uh, right. horrific war, you, you made that decision to come here. Yeah. I, I made huh. a decision to end up staying here. I was uh, otherwise going to go back and, uh, um, Mm -hmm. you know, have a life there. I don't know what I would have done. I've, uh, I have um, um, traveled around the world just prior to um, coming back here for the second time. Um, so I did it way back when, when there was no internet, no nothing. So you couldn't really you know, <laughs> film, film. I maybe had like 60 pictures from entire Asia or. <laughs> or yeah. It's not, you know, you know, it's but, not the Instagram travelers of today. No, right. <laughs> no. But it, hey, was, let's... it was a lot of fun. Let's do a little geography here. We're going to show a couple of maps just to so give people that are tuned in a little bit of a, uh, a sense of, uh, of of where we are. Actually, I'm going to back this up just to um, uh, give an idea uh, in the middle of the screen here. And I can kind of turn on my little, uh, I'll do this. Okay. Um, let me get my pen here. Okay. Right here, of course, I'm circling is... Croatia. So for those who just need a little reminder, you know, look at the 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 neighbors of of, of certainly Albania, Serbia, but just across the water, just looking across the water over there uh, to Italy and in the north uh, bordering in Slovenia uh, as well. And as we zoom in to see where Marina um, uh, near that red dot isn't exactly we can clear that uh that circle that red dot is not exactly right Where, whereabouts did you go grow up compared to that dot there so i grew up just uh, um um a few millimeters north of that actually. 
<laughs> so it's pretty close. <laughs> it's very close. There's a town called Metkovic, and uh, the uh, uh, the town itself is on the border between Croatia, right on the border between Croatia and uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, the owners of the wineries in Komarna, which is basically where you put the dot, if I see it correctly, mm-hmm. um, is uh, they're all from uh, from Metkovic. So that was sort of my introduction to my connection to the wineries. The original ones that we started working with is because of um, um, friends from um, early childhood. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's come back to this. I, I'm going to get out of the uh, white room. There we go. Um yeah, so that's that's in the southern part, the um, uh, not far from Dubrovnik as well, which is of course very very famous and has gotten um, uh, recently just crazy touristed because of its uh, role in the in the Game of Thrones series. Um, oh, absolutely! Yeah, I have to tell you, my kids could not believe it when I told them that when you know way back when when I was a kid there was no orthodontist in my hometown so I had to go to an orthodontist to King's Landing and of course they, they just think that's crazy <laughs> right right because how would that would that be like about an hour uh drive a little for bit you over or? an hour yeah a little bit over an hour but not yeah not much more yeah. so. so um I so let's talk about your 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 um your 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 high school and your college, you know the the your cultural you know dance and what your parents did. Um, tell us a little bit about what that culture, what those folk songs and dance and costumes are about. What the, what do they kind of look like? Sure. So um, I think in most Slavic countries um, there is a very strong following of uh, traditional costumes and music and um, dancing, the customs in general. And um, uh, in Croatia, certainly, um, when um, uh, as kids growing up, you know, every town, every village has its own uh, dance group that that sort of performs. In some cases, it's truly authentic if it's a if it's a village. Um, but uh, if it's a little bit bigger city, then there are people who are leading the groups of kids, teaching them how to do it. And there's a, a huge pride. Um, that is uh, paid to um, the tradition and keeping that tradition going. Um, so I have done that from early on, and obviously with my parents being involved um, in both um, reconstructing the, the national costume in that area. My mom had um, gone through uh, the process of collecting old photos uh, in order to be able to reconstruct it because it actually in that particular area didn't exist uh, or wasn't uh, uh, in existence at a time. Uh, but now, if you go back to my hometown, you will see this um, a group that uh, has uh, children from um, age 10 to all the way through high school who all have these newly made, obviously, costumes, but based on the, the customs and, uh, and sing the songs that have been um, discovered in the villages. My, my dad was the one that was actually um, recording them. He was uh, documented it. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, so, so it's kind of interesting because on some level, everybody goes through that. And then there are people who kind of stay with that culture uh, because it is what we grew up with and it, it is what we all know. Um, like, you know, you've been to Croatia. So after every dinner, somebody starts singing some songs, right? I mean, there's never Mm -hmm. a time when nobody sings. And so what do you sing? You sing songs from your area. And of course, then you become a teenager and you get exposed to, you know, rock and roll or and everything else. And and the question is, uh, how do you combine the two? And it's really interesting. It's I mean, I never listened to the folk music from Croatia as in a a listening music. I mean, I actually tend to stick really boring, I guess. I tend to say <laughs> classics, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, it is something that's just kind of part of life. Yeah. Um, so and, you you don't listen to it, but you sing it. it it's it's, oh, it's I something. Sing it, yeah. 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 yeah huh. Whenever there is an opportunity, I do. Sometimes even when I'm doing chores around the house. But <laughs> there you um, go. Yeah. Uh, some you know there. Is, so, go ahead. I was going to say some of the songs are actually working songs. I mean, when you think about it, what was the music for? It was supporting a lot of different things in a life 
that did not have, you know, internet or whatever, you know, people were pretty much farmers. So, um, so whether you're working in a field, you needed to work at a certain tempo, because if you worked too hard, for example, um, uh, in the fields at the time when you have to harvest the wheat, uh, you could work for an hour or two and not more. So they actually have songs that that are that men were typically doing that, that they would sing with a certain tempo because that way you can do it for the whole day and equivalent to that other kinds of songs for other kind of situations so interesting so the the rhythm is uh is rhythm is, is very important, yeah. yeah um and 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 going back to that time where where you know in in the yugoslavia days i, I guess and and in and generations before of course um the the uh the concept is it merenda did I say it right? Oh yes, that's a, that's mostly the word that's being used in uh, in Dalmatia, Marenda. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that uh, this is where not only are we, you know, we're uh, the, the whole the people working in the fields are eating together, they're uh, they're drinking yeah. together, and yeah. uh, and coming together at that at that table. Yeah, yeah I guess it's, it's a it's more of a Dalmatian thing, huh? Yeah. Well, no, it's uh, the, the word is Dalmatian. There are other words in other parts of the uh, ah, okay. of the country. Okay, yeah, I I, I visited uh, Alan um, Bibich as you uh, you probably know him, and he's the one who taught me that word. And he also said insisted that uh, at least for the Dalmatians, uh, that in, a minimum of three liters of debit uh, a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, of course he would say that, right? <laughs> yes, of course, yeah, of it's course. A wonderful debit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to show us, our uh, viewers today a little bit of, uh, of of Croatia. You you know, the Croatians have this very strong national pride. You know, it comes from everything from, you know, like you say, the, the culture, the songs, in and to, of course, football, especially with the pride around the last World Cup, you know, how how that turned out. But uh, let's go ahead and um, and watch this little um, um, Croatian tourism video. And uh, we'll we'll talk about this on the other side. You have to see this video. <laughs> when you come to Croatia, you have to visit the city where I have found my love, Dubrovnik. And you have to visit my Slavonia. You have to visit our national parks. You have to taste our food. And see a concert in this place. You have to learn the game in the local playground like we did. And hit the basket on his court in our city, Shivenik. and visit one of the sunniest coastlines in Europe. You have to enjoy coffee on any of our squares. And see the most beautiful Croatian building. You have to listen to the biggest Croatian musician, the sea organ in Zadar. And see the great cannon fire off in my city, Zagreb. You will never walk alone on these hiking trails. a party all night relax all day skate like this climb like that swim here cycle there sail everywhere When you want to lift your spirits sky high, you have to come to Croatia. 
Croatia, full of life. Ah, God, that's it's it's so inspiring to see that those landscapes, the the smiles, the uh, uh, feel good, and uh, you know, we had Modric in there, of course, the legendary uh, um, yes, footballer. I, I, yeah. and, in all of those a uh, bunch of other players as well yes and, um, some actors yes yeah but you know what's really interesting is that um uh, if you remember the last scene um of dubrovnik um as the drone sort of goes away from the the fort um on the left hand side um uh, uh you can see the water polo uh the uh the field for uh, the edge of the water polo uh um pool i guess but it's mm -hmm. basically right in the sea and that's what people do i mean in my um in the town of gradets in um in dalmatia where my grandfather is from uh, my maternal grandfather um uh, they have um a team a local team that uh, basically that's how everybody learns how to play water polo and they go from one town to another and just uh, uh there is an edge of a field um nobody had the pools there uh, most <laughs> of the time they don't use them yeah Huh. Interesting. Hey, let's um, let's talk about um, the, another journey that you're currently on right now, and that's this uh, Croatian um, premium wine imports. This business that you started, among all the other millions of things you you and your husband are doing, uh, you decided uh, just about a year ago to um, to start importing um, Croatian wine, particularly from a focus on. Uh, where you grew up, the the, the 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 winemakers all grew up in your village. Did you know them um, uh, as a kid when you were there, or, or their their parents? Yeah, some of them I yeah. did, the um, and parents, and um, so the president of the Komar Associations. There are seven wineries there. Um, is actually a, a childhood friend, um, and there were others who I knew um, also, but not that well. And uh, then there are some other winemakers who are much younger, obviously. Um, sure. Um, who have uh, recently started working. This is a very new, that's a brand new appellation. Uh, they essentially, um, out of the hills, created um, vineyards. Um, so it has uh, been planting in, I believe, mid 2000. Um, and uh, they were meliorating, is what they were saying. Essentially, they were crushing the stone on the hills to, um, to create it so that they can plant the, the vines. So sometime in the 2008 or so, they started actually um, uh, getting the first fruits, and, and, uh, but it's maybe 11 or 12 then that the, um, uh, the wine became really good because uh, vines are young, so it took, took some time. Obviously. Yeah, it takes some time. Certainly young, young you know, you, you, need, you need a good 10 years on those vines to, yeah. uh, to start to get the complexity into the wine. Um, right. So, so, and it is the newest appellation in Croatia, Comerna, right. and it's 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 yes. it's not far as as the crow flies from one of its famous a appellations in Dingich. Um, Correct. And and There's and a in story about that, they have when they picked the the area where to go, they have uh, literally picked the spot that was mimicking the uh, Dingich position. I mean, yeah, Dingage, I, I was, yeah. It's yeah, I was actually it's basically the same latitude. Yeah, I'm actually gonna um, bring back up our, our slides here because I want to go through and um, you know while we're talking about wine, um, and we can kind of come back to this. But you know, one one of the things as I travel, when I really love uh, about traveling, particularly in the uh, uh, Eastern Europe, former uh, Yugoslavia, and and countries around the Black Sea, uh, is this indigenous varietals, the unique varietals. And in many ways, I call these areas um, because here in the United States, as you very well know, it's it's very difficult to to find a bottle of wine from Croatia, even Slovenia, let alone Bulgaria, Romania, or Moldova. Yeah. Um, and uh, the the so I but but wine's not new to these areas, even though they made that appellation. Man, people. Um, in fact. Uh, Alice Kristan, she believes um, that the wine first was in, invented, found, discovered in a cave on, is it the island of Kirk? I, I, I can't remember the place exactly. He, he, he has some property there. He's a Slovenian guy, but, but this, is, this is a place he believes in, and, and, and that's where wine 
uh, started in the in the in history. Now the Bulgarians will say it was in Thracia. The Georgians will say you know it was, uh, it was you know, you know the Caucasus. of course yeah but, yeah. Uh, it, but I mean but, it, it's been there for a long time. Let me put it that way. So where did it come from first? It doesn't to a certain extent matter as long as it's good wherever you're growing it, right? Um, exactly. So the, the Greeks brought it to the islands of southern uh, southern Croatia. Uh, uh, I think it's been uh, at least 4,000 years. Uh, and then it continued, obviously, to be, uh, they continue to be uh, raised there. Um, there are remnants of Greek cultures on a variety of islands there, as well as Roman culture. I mean, not just remnants, but like full-blown buildings or cities. I mean, you've seen split. Um, yes. It's basically practically intact, uh, the base of the, the city. Uh, the, the second or third level of the building may have been torn and then rebuilt, but uh, but the base of the city is the same exact streets that the Romans walked on. So um, when you have a culture that's that steeped, obviously in the fields, they will be doing things to support the cities that they're there. So Yeah. And and as as we go and 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 look at some of these just uh, the, these regions, so these are uh, the major wine regions: uh, Slavonia, Danube, Croatian uplands, Istria, Kavarner, Dalmatia, and of course in Dalmatia you have that appellation uh, such as Dengic and uh, the new uh, Komarna, um, right. one that we we're we're talking about. Um, but let's. Um, you know this. This is a, 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 a winemaking family. A boutique. Who, who are these folks? This is the Hajic family. They are part of Mejimurje um, uh, wine region, uh, which is uh, very north of Croatia, uh, almost on the Slovenian border. And uh, uh, they, just like all of their colleagues in the area, produce a lot of great wines that are very typical for that area, from Kushipel to uh, Grashevina, etc. So. Um, that's, I thought that was a very interesting picture, particularly with the, um, uh, this is called Kolpotets, this, uh, tall, um, I don't know what to call it. It's, it, it's not a statue. It's, it actually has a function. It's a, it's a huge rattle that is there to, to scare the birds off, uh, away. Um, oh, this, this kind of windmill looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually to, to scare birds away. Scares the birds away. And, yeah. And you can so see. That's the traditional piece, but uh, the winemaker here, Tatiana, actually um, has gotten very smart, and she has uh, uh, she's using technology, the same one that's used in um, on the ski mountains to uh, to deal with with um, avalanche. Uh, so she's using that as a sound to scare the birds off now. But the <laughs> tradition of the tradition of having this is is still important. Wow, that's fascinating. I love it. I'm 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 coming through these because they're because I wanted to come. We've got some photos of um, uh, Komarna and Dingich, and wanted wanted to come back to that that question. But these are are um, uh, wines from um, all over Croatia. It looks like, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So uh, some of them are from this area that we just looked at, Mejimurje, um, and uh, uh, some are from Dalmatia, and then some are from uh, Istria. Um, the uh, uh, Slavonia we still don't have in the United States uh, uh, simply because COVID happened this year, so we didn't go <laughs> we didn't go back um, to expand uh, toward that area. But our plan is to actually have representation from all of the regions. So, so from from like Elok up in that area, huh? right? Right. Yeah. Awesome. That's almost to the Serbian border there. Yeah. Um, okay. So here is, this is Komarna, right? Correct. This is Komarna. And uh, 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 as you can see, these um, uh, vineyards are planted in a way that they face down so that uh, every little berry gets exposure, maximum exposure of the sun throughout the day um, uh, from morning to the evening. It's facing south, southwest. And uh, the uh, 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 sea and the breeze that that uh, is created um, from the sea, both in the summertime but in the winter as well, um, is actually a really important uh, aspect of um, how this whole uh, appellation. I mean, if you see, there are a bunch of different wineries right in this same photo, um, and uh, uh, all of them are organic. They have actually made a point of all being uh, organic. They are, they are ECHO certified by European um, uh, Union standards. Um, and uh, what that means is there's no pesticides. And 
um, the reason they can do it is because it's actually fairly breezy and windy so that uh, you don't really need the pesticide. You don't, yeah, the bugs, the, 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 yeah. too much wind for the bugs to, the, to they, they like, they, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and the other thing, like Dingich here, you know, you are, have that southwestern exposure. you got so much more hours of daylight uh, than, yeah. than other regions. And you get that big reflecting, uh, like big mirror of, of the Adriatic. Uh, yes, that. and they, they actually talk about uh, uh, a trifecta of uh, insolation. So sun to the grape, sun um, to the, um, what's really karst, the limestone terrain, mm -hmm. and reflection to the grape, and then sun sea to the grape. So um, uh, Plavats Mali is very happy here. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, and and we're gonna we're certainly gonna talk about it. We're, we're, we're gonna be tasting that pretty soon here. And then this um, obviously is a is a view uh, from from that region uh, as well. And yeah, I'm this just is gonna... the view toward the Pedeshat Peninsula. So Dingach is on the other side of this peninsula. Yeah, and I think there's Dingach right there. Yes. Um, yeah. And you can see, you know, I, I, I rode my motorcycle on that road that you can see going down the middle of this thing and then wound it down. I mean, it is steep. It's, it's very difficult to, to get a sense of how steep it is by looking at the photograph until you go there. Um, and that makes it doubly challenging for, uh, for them to tend to the vines and, and certainly harvest, huh? Absolutely. Uh, in both areas, uh, they can really do it only manually. In... Um, um, in um, Dingach, I think that they really can't even use any um, help. Uh, and there are some spots that are go up to 60% slope. Uh, Komarna is up to 35 or so, which doesn't sound like much. But when you are on top of that hill and need to go down, and even as a skier, you know, I thought it should be easy, no problem. And, you know, when I was harvesting there a year ago, um, I started walking down the hills and uh it just was not going to work i had to walk backwards actually so oh wow yeah so, yeah it, it, and it, some areas they use the ropes when they're working mm -hmm. so. hmm. fascinating let's um um i'm going to come back here we'll come back to some other photos um so here you are started a wine business in 19 then the pandemic hits and you oh. know first of all it's it's you know, for for people like me and uh, what I, I like to call think of myself as a wine explorer, it's it's a it's a no brainer to 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 try some new things. Um, but uh, what what challenges have you faced um, in addition to the pandemic, and what are you doing to 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 build this business and get people to start knowing about and drinking Croatian wine? Sure. So, um, well, that's a kind of a big question. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, businesses has been started because we have concluded that um, um, quality of wine is great and it has gotten to be so much better in the last uh, 10 to 15 years. I'm calling it the Croatian wine renaissance. Um, you know, the way that my grandfather made wine, it was essentially, you know, you, you, you tend to the vines, you, you, you get the grapes at the end of the year, you do the I Love Lucy stomp and, and, and then, you know, <laughs> uh, and then uh, you drink the wine for the next year and you do it over again, right? And uh, it was really for the family and, uh, in itself. And most families had um, vineyards to support their, their own um, needs. Um, but uh, uh, nowadays, I mean, the whole new generation of winemakers is... Um, first of all, they went to college and, and uh, uh, got degrees and understanding, and they, they went and, and did harvest in other in other uh, parts of the world. Um, they the, the other thing that also happened is that European Union um, has been really uh, uh, helpful here because uh, most of these small boutique wineries were able to apply for help and get the equipment that. Um, they otherwise wouldn't be able to. And uh, uh, so if you go to any of these wineries, um, they look just like Napa, any of the like, you know, big wineries in terms of uh, uh, the equipment that they're using, technology that they're using, technique, techniques that they're using. Um, they're experimenting with uh, new uh, kinds of things for the area. So for example, um, um, uh, they recently started in this area uh, producing uh, a sparkling wine, which was unheard of. 
Um, right. and, and, and the only reason they can do that is because they have the right uh, place uh, place in the in the uh, winery to be able to do it with the refrigerated rooms and, 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 and stuff like that. And uh, one very interesting thing is that they actually do um, harvest for Porship, the white grape. Um, uh, they do that at night because it's cooler. I mean, days there when you need to do a harvest for Porship, it's still August. Um, so uh, it's so it's hot. early ripening grape. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so hot that uh, it's not good for either people or the grapes. So they end up doing it at night. Huh, that's that, that's yeah. interesting. I, actually, when I was uh, scheduling uh, Matthew and Shireen for the webcast here um, a month or so ago, uh, it was tentative because they were actually going to um, uh, you know, had had been uh, offered to to assist in a in a post harvest. So yes, it was back in did. August. Yeah, they did. Yeah, and uh, they actually uh, showed the whole uh, the whole thing, which was great. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, so. so Without going back to that chart, Poship is a white uh, grape. It's um, right. it's it's grown in, in Dalmatia, but famously in Cortula, which is an island right. just off of the Pelashek. Um, but uh, you know, if, if, and and not that that we're going to commit to that, but if there is a uh, what I would call the Malbec of Croatia, you know, Malbec is kind of the wine that's the gateway wine to get into Argentina. Um, yeah. You know, in, in, in many ways, you know, for me, I, Plavitz Mali could be, um, at least from the red side, could be the gateway wine for Croatia. Tell us a little bit about uh, Plavitz Mali and its history and its uniqueness to, to uh, Croatia. Sure. And, then, and then let's talk about some wines we've got, we've got opened here. Sure. Um, so uh, Plavitz Mali is an indigenous variety uh, that has... Um, uh, been created uh, uh, naturally uh, as a hybrid between um, um, what is called now Zinfandel here in the United States. And it's confirmed that Zinfandel in California equals uh, Primitivo in Italy and equals Plavats, or I'm sorry, uh, Tribidrag in uh, Dalmatia. Uh, or another name is Srljenak Kaštelanski. Um, so <laughs> Never be able to. try, yeah, try to pronounce that. Um, so, um, the, um, uh, theory is that, uh, because Dalmatia has such a very star, uh, a very strong, um, climate that, that is, and the terrain is also very harsh. Um, it's very, uh, hot and, 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 uh, very, a lot of sun in the summertime. And uh, the winters are cold and the winds are very, it's actually temperature wise, not as strong as the winds are. Uh, what happened, we think, is that the Zinfandel itself almost uh, basically uh, disappeared from the area. Uh, I always say that they probably just found enough plants to do the genetic study. But most, <laughs> of, the, most of the vineyards were replaced by uh, Plavats Mali. And uh, that's a very hardy plant in itself. Uh, sometimes roots go 30 feet deep um, into, I wouldn't call it even soil, it's really uh, rocks. And um, um, because it's a very hardy plant, um, it, it's a red variety. And, and it, uh, uh, because of the sun, it actually, uh, the, its skin is so blue that uh, word plava means blue. So it's the little blue is what it literally stands for. Ah, Plavitz, um, right, because Mali is little, right? Right, yeah. and uh, um, and uh, it takes a long time to to be ripe enough for um, to create wine, and the different winemakers choose different ways of how to what they call tame Plavitz Mali, because depending on the year, those thirty feet of uh, roots could actually pick up stuff that you don't want it to be picked up. Some yeah. choose to do it by uh, uh, harvesting early so that um, uh, they can uh, control the sugar level in the grapes, uh, so that in the berries, so that there's a less alcohol in them. Some choose to go all the way, but um, they may be blended with some other variety that they grow right next to each other. And, uh, and then others choose to do 100%, but then they, depending on whether they're uh, oaking it, uh, putting it into uh, aging it in oaks of either French or American or Croatian, every year they may actually change change slightly um, the treatment, if you would. So sure, um, and, and and you um, are 
obviously I have a focus on Komarna, but you're also in, um, um, bringing in um, grapes from Dengage, for example. Um, yes, yes. Uh, so, so your portfolio is 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 beyond that. But but you've got three expressions that you shared with me here um, of sure. Plavitz Mali from Komarna, right? Yes, and uh, so so there are sort of three levels, if you would, of Plavitz Mali that every winemaker chooses to do. So. This is a Terra Madre, and that's a Terra Madre, yeah, um, Terra Madre um, uh, Barrique. Um, so it's a, a medium-bodied wine that um, um, is very drinkable as soon as you open it up. Um, it's, it has been created exactly for that purpose, so that if you look at it, while it is dark, obviously, because of the, the dark... Um, um, uh, tannins uh, from the berries, uh, it is very drinkable uh, and sippable that you almost don't even need to have food with it, whereas most of the rest of the plavats will actually uh, usually be had with, paired with with something. Mm -hmm. It's It's got a, um, a, a bit of a spice and plum on the nose. And... Uh... Do you think it's drinkable? It's very drinkable, you know, but yeah. it, it, yet it, it, it has tannic structure. It's got good exactly. structure, even, you know, which, which, um, it, you know, obviously this barrique means they, they have aged this for some time and, and, and whether they it's have aged for eight months, um, eight, and uh, in new barrels or, or second or third use barrels. So they usually do one to two years. Okay. Um, and then they, oh. they change it over. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, the last Plavitz Mali I had actually was um, back in May when I uh, interviewed Ashley Colburn on the webcast because I had a, um, a, a a wine that I still in the cellar, uh, for 2012 from Var, uh, yeah. um, and that that was very nice. This is pop and pour. You don't you know the, yeah. you don't need to decant this. This is um this is lovely. No. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, in this case, the Terra Madre wine, winemaker likes to blend things. So, uh, you know, they have vineyards um, that are um, Cabernet and Syrah right next to the um, vineyard of Plavats. And uh, they mix up to 15 percent in a different year. It's different percentage point of either Cab or Syrah. So for American market, this is actually for people who are uninitiated into Croatian wines, this is actually a really good wine to start with because it gives you the, it, it certainly gives you the understanding of what Croatian wines are, but it's not kind of like mm -hmm. killing you with too much of the tannin. Uh, from right. Flavet. Yeah. Right. And, and uh, what's the price point of this wine, you know, to, to so a, this a one, consumer? Um, so this one uh, on our online store is uh, uh, listed as $19. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the stores, in the markets, we have them in Massachusetts and uh, in Georgia and actually soon to go into New Hampshire. Uh, it really depends on what they do, but it should be someplace in that, uh, uh, in right. that range. Um, and uh, uh, this is really a good wine to have either on its own or you could have it because it's so light, even with chicken. Um, you know, if you're pairing it with something, you don't have to go unlike most of the other plavats that are premium bodied. Um, uh, that you really need to have with some some much stronger meat or or strong yeah. cheeses, you know. So um, yeah, I was gonna say this. I, I could see just uh, um, sipping this and having a little bit of uh, you know. Of course, I can't you know if I could get some Croatian cheese, but I was thinking of Manchego, a Spanish, really oh, nice. The, actually, that would be perfect. Sheep cheese, yes. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while you do that, I'm gonna actually pour myself the next. Um, uh, the next version, which is also Terra Madre, and it's a premium bottle. Um, oh, we're going to do that one, not the not the Camarna Seven. Yeah, I would do Camarna Seven a little bit later because this okay. is actually good to compare. So this is um, uh, Terra Madre's premium version. So first of all, the between um, uh, premium version versus medium bodied version, uh, they would choose different clusters. All of the winemakers do that. 
There were two sure. different clusters, and uh, the best goes into premium. This has been an oak for 12 months. Uh, they also ended up doing a little bit of blending. Um, they received a silver uh, decanter for this particular year, and then they also, for the next year, got also silver. So um, this is definitely stronger. Um, it also has a little bit of Cab and Syrah. So still is a kind of a wine that for the uninitiated into Croatian uh, terroir would really work well, I think, for um, understanding, um, generally speaking, the area and uh, the variety that we're talking about. Plavac is very strong on tannins and uh, it could mm -hmm. be. Um, uh, it could be kind of hard to get into if you if you're just starting from a very robust version. Right. It's it's like somebody just going right for step uh, to a real hearty cabernet, you know, because it's it's yeah. got that it's got that uh, um, heft that you get in a cabernet or even a syrah, you know, a, 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 yeah. a meaty syrah. Yeah. I guess a meaty yeah. syrah. But no, it's um, uh, it, it, it it's it's. Uh, for me to try to compare this to another varietal would not be fair because that, that that's not the point of uh, of tasting wines and new and and uh, and I was I, this is where I was going a little while ago and I'm I'm calling Croatia and all these regions the new old world because the the yeah. as I, as we as we were talking that that winemaking has been going on for generations and in the and that's what's so cool about uh, all of the um, Slavic countries all of the former uh, Soviet bloc countries. That everybody, every family had a vineyard, just just about everybody, and they made wine for themselves. But as I as I learned with meeting many of the young winemakers who, like you said, had gone to school and educated and are really experimenting and are leading this kind of a uh, revolution, if you will, or this renaissance and 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 bringing uh, awareness to and and quality to these wines is. They're very, very quick to say, this is not my grandfather's wine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can yeah. definitely uh, see the difference between the medium body drink drinkable wine and the one um, that's a premium wine that clearly um, has a smoothness to it. It's rounded. It's um, uh, and it would be paired phenomenally well, I think, with anything like, a, uh, you know, lamb or a steak or yeah. um, a lot of garlic, rosemary, you know, the classic Mediterranean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and it's great to do these as I'm doing them side by side, the two Terra Madres. Um, and, you know, even though they're they're a little bit different in the blends, they're primarily plavits and uh yeah. There is there, there is this note, um, you know. There's there's plenty of, of of good ripe red fruit in there, but there is this spice that I can't put my finger on, and it's going to come to me probably at the end of the webcast or after we've gone off. But um, but it's it's uh, you know the 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 heritage between the two, the relationship you can definitely see. But yes, this one has got more uh, tannic structure. It's got um, you know it, it's mid palate is definitely more bold and okay. um and it kind of gives you a nice gush of fruit and then finishes very nicely this one finishes a little uh softer um yeah. but uh that's and what a lot of expect. people that's exactly what a lot of people like you know so i mean mm -hmm. ultimately it's you know when you have a quality wine created it's a, ultimately a choice based on a personal mm -hmm. preference that one has and now we've gone up to the premium, which I guess, you know, in many, uh, there is no reserved uh, designation in Croatia, right? They can't, it's not allowed um, to use. They're, they're, they're changing that now. Uh, they're okay. going to be having that. So uh, it, the, the, the system from the structure that they had uh, has changed. So some places actually are starting yeah. to call it that, but it's not official yet. They're moving yeah. toward what So this is kind of a, yeah, premium is kind of like we could call that, you know, for for those just yeah. reserved. Now, how does this price compare to the to the sub twenty dollars? So this uh, one is, I believe, thirty five. Um, thirty five. On our yeah, on our online store. I mean, obviously, this has been um, uh, aged longer. It also is something uh, a wine that can um, truly be cellared for a while. The interesting thing about Plavats is that because it hasn't been made. Um, uh, to the cellared in the past, nobody really knows how long it can stay. So all of these wineries are doing uh, verticals, but we can only know, you know, it's going to take us 10 We've only got a 10-year history at this yeah, point, exactly. right? Yeah. 
So, so we for know sure it can go for uh, for 10 to 15 years. So this is going to be the one that I would definitely sell her. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you're going to open it, if you're going to be opening the bottle now, I would absolutely um, recommend decanting it uh, or aerating mm -hmm. um, uh, versus the um, um, barrique version did not need that at all. That was yeah. really, you know, something to be used now. And and mine has been um, mine's been in the glass for oh about an hour and a half. Um, okay. So it's 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 definitely. I'm sure it would be a lot tighter if I if I and I didn't taste it when I first poured it out. Oh, okay. um, but uh, but no, I wanted to wait to, to do this with you. Hey, before <laughs> sure. we before we come back and do another Plavit Smalley, I want to play another video that I think is very dramatic, and it comes from just. Um, in between, this was filmed in between Komarna and Dingic, more or less, yeah. and um, and it just shows a bit about how dramatic C Croatians can be. This is this is awesome. Watch this, guys, and we'll turn off our uh, our mics. In again. Croatia, not just Croatians, but Croatia as well. In, in Croatia, yes, in yeah. Croatia, of course. <laughs> Sexy, well, right? juicy, powerful, <laughs> uh, emotional, and dramatic. Um, 
that, extremely yeah. talented. I mean, she's been um, uh, doing classic cello for a very long time, and then also uh, combining Anna Rutzner is the name of the uh, artist, um, combining uh, the classical with the new whatever the new rhythm she she chose to do. They're kind of like two cellos. I think she started a long a lot earlier, but but either way. Um, a phenomenal artist and uh, what we were watching obviously a, a big drama behind just the artist and the music is uh, the area of stone and the stone walls and uh, that's just uh, hard to not react to that drama <laughs> yeah not you know in, in in that video you know what's so what's so cool about not only this is the the longest wall that's preserved wall in all of Europe is the stone walls um, you know, the, everybody gets very, very emotional about walking the ramparts, walking the walls of Dubrovnik, but, but walking the walls of, of stone and from Molly stone to stone. I mean, it's, it's, it, it's amazing, but you have the salt flats, the salt beds there, yeah. uh, at one smart. And then, then in the, the bay, the bay of, um, of Molly stone right there is with those oysters coming out. I mean, this is, uh, yeah. you're seeing a, a, a part of Croatia beyond the dra backdrop of that drama music and, um, the beautiful people and talented people, uh, is this, uh, you know, that that's the beginning. That's the, the, the southernmost part of the Pelashak peninsula, which has got, uh, which is just packed with wineries, um, uh, right growing Plavitz Mali and, and other things. Um, yeah. But um, and by the way, the walls were built uh, to protect the Dubrovnik Republic from Venetians because that was the border between the Venice uh, Republic and Dubrovnik and uh, um, uh, salt was valuable. So yeah, well, you know, that's so why you see got it. You, yeah. the, the Romans, that's how they paid people, you know, that were building all the roads, you know, are you worth your salt? That, that's where that expression comes from, you know. <laughs> I, you, it's, okay. I did not hear that before. It, yeah, but yeah that's, it, it is true because because that that's how people were were paid the the the, the, the Romans. That salt is uh yeah. So that's a good point. Bring up the history. You know, when I was there, and I I joked about this. Um, uh, you know, people think of Croatia and they think of Dubrovnik as um, as uh, Game of Thrones, you know. And I'm like, that's that's fake news. That's fake history, you know. But the real history is so much more interesting there. You know, and the deal, uh, the deal that that was cut between the the, the Dubrovnik um, uh, Empire or whatever, you know, the 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 community that with the uh, Ottomans, you know, oh, they yeah. were like, the, you know, they they were brilliant. They, that was brilliant. Yeah. That was the only place that was free for a long time. And yeah, you know, yeah, um, we're gonna go into that. But I wanted, I I got stuck in stone, so I've got my own. It's not gonna be nearly as fun and as um uh ex as dramatic as the um um uh, the cellist. Uh, but I want to show uh my stone in the walls video. So we'll talk about this on the other side and and go for that next Plavitz Mali. Well, the town is called Stone, and this is where I, I kind of broke down temporarily. We've got a solution, uh, parts being shipped to me on a bus late tonight. Hopefully I'll have it by 4.30 in the morning. The walls that surround the fort, that, that create the fortress of this town, they say are the longest in Europe. It's quite a hike, but once again, worth it. Started counting steps, huh? Shouldn't I? Yeah, who's counting? Ah, that was, that was quite something too. Yeah, it's 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 in, and as I as I end that video, not a bad place to be stranded, you know. Plenty of oysters, plenty of Plavitz Mali, and um, 
and uh, plenty of history to, to, to get your head around. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we, by the way, are um, working already with one of the uh, wineries that is uh, right next to Stone um, called Marlais Winery. And we have their wine here already. Uh, we have um, uh, conversations with a bunch of other wineries from Pedeschatz as well. Um, St. Hill's Winery uh, has, we have their Dingach and we have their Komarna wine as well. Uh, that's kind of how we started getting into the uh, into the Pedeschatz Peninsula. But um, the next wine I think that you that you picked is the um, the wine uh, called uh, Komarna 7. And uh, this is the wine that we actually created together with the uh, Komarna Association. Um, we have asked uh, the winemakers to um, work together to create a plavats that can be good sort of premium quality, um, but at a, at a price that's more affordable. Um, so that one runs also $19. Um, but the interesting thing, and, and this kind of, I kind of feel like this is my baby, you know, because um, <laughs> they've obviously worked on the wine. That's all I can say. But, uh, but the idea for that was created much earlier, you know, when they started as, as an association. Uh, but then they were building, they were busy building, you know, the uh, creating the vineyards or building the wineries or, or putting the meteorological station there um, and somehow never got to, to uh, being done. And then um, this was last May in 19 that, that I asked uh, um, uh, two winemakers there. So you were telling me you can actually do this. How would you do that? And how much of a time would it take to do that? And wh what does it take basically? Uh -huh. And they said, well, we better do it now because if we get into the harvest season, we're, it's just not going to get done. So I said, okay. And um, fast forward, last December, we had this wine here with the labels, the everything, you know. Um, so, so it was a quite accomplishment. Yeah, so this is actually, you know, essentially competitors of each other are um, uh, working together and creating something that is – representative of the region. Now, what's the significance of seven? Is it seven winemakers, seven wineries? It's seven wineries, yes. So the, that's the name of the association. So um, I would argue that they don't really compete, you know, because they're all such small boutique wineries that there's just no way that they really compete for dollars anyway, or, or Kunas over there. Uh, it's a question of a style. Um, uh, uh, Riesman Winery, for example, um, has a, a style where they and I actually have a bottle here of their wine, um, Trividrag. This is this is actually Zinfandel. They have a style where they they really create uh, almost like a French like. It's much smoother and um, less uh, alcohol and not as robust. So it's a softer version. Uh, then you have Terra Madre that we just started, and then um, Comana Seven is a result of a. Um, uh, uh, it's a direct result of two winemakers who worked, uh, who were chosen uh, among all of the wineries to work on the blend. And so one of them is the uh, Volarevich um, winery. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also got a silver for, the, for this version. Um, so Josef Volarevich and Marco Schumann from Terra Madre basically uh, worked together on a blend. Uh, Josef is a... Uh, Scientist, he uh, is working on his PhD right now, working on theories of how um, to macerate Plavat Smali just the right way so that everybody can actually uh, take advantage of that research. So he created, I think it was original, maybe eight different blends. And then Marco and him decided, okay, well, we're going to go with these four. And uh, they brought the four bottles, different blends in a um, into a meeting of the winemakers and said, all right, well, let's all decide which one it's going to be. So I knew this was happening. So Michovil, my, my friend, um, calls me and says, well, we're here. We're tasting Plavats. Um, you know, the K7, we already started calling it affectionately that. And uh, uh, so I said, okay, so what's the decision? And he goes, well, wait a second. It's only been 15 minutes. We have a whole night to keep tasting. So, <laughs> so, um, so basically they had four different bottles. I think it was in like a, you know, a Coca-Cola plastic bottle or something. They all chose the one that was going to be representative together. So it was a blind tasting, uh, blind testing rather um, of, uh, of Plavats. And they've created this, which I think is a, as you can see, it's probably much darker. Yeah. Um, 
uh, much more robust. Um, I just love when I swirl this wine, I can see the reflection of you in the uh, in your glass. In oh, the, in really? my glass. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. But anyway, you were describing this. Is got um, yep. It's approachable. So and and the aromas to me represent exactly what Dalmatia Coast is all about. I mean, when you think about it, if you have organic uh, vineyards, they're not using any pesticides. They're not using any herbicides either. And what's the wild uh, grass, if you would, or the weeds that grow there? It's rosemary and sage, and you know all of the yeah, yeah. all the things that we love to have. I mean, obviously, it's not going to grow big because um, they will they end up pulling them out if the plants are too big. But but either way, that's what grows there. So that's what does give a um, um, a, a certain element of a taste. The uh, the, the, the other, terroir, as we like to say, yeah, yeah. And another thing that actually impacts it is also the fact that it's so close to the ocean, the salt from the wind in the winter, the salt dust actually gets blown into the soil and uh, it does impact the wine. I mean, some people say that they can taste the salt. I don't taste the salt necessarily, but but definitely it has a different terroir than Dingach. Yeah, Dingach... Um... It uh, tends to be a little bit riper, a bit hotter. I'll bet you the alcohol level in Dingich is hot, hotter than this. Um, that's just a guess. Um, some of those, just because of the ripening of the fruit there. Um, but Most but again, those, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is the production of, you know, because we talk, these are boutique wineries. They don't really compete. Right. How many how many bottles or cases are they producing? Like like um, of, of the of the Terra Madre, for example, or what is what is the more or less. I have to, I have to think now. I think it's 80,000 uh, bottles a year. 80,000 uh, bottles. They're, they're talking about bottles. They're not talking. And that's the biggest uh, one. That would be the, So that's like 6,000 cases, which is, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bo it's small. Boutique. Yeah. yeah. Boutique, yeah. So our, our, um, um, our strategy, by the way, in terms of uh, selling in the United States, is actually was always to focus on people who are interested in boutique wines. I mean, we can't compete. Um, with the price or the marketing or sales machine of the larger wineries, no matter where they're from. So we need to really focus on what matters the most, in my opinion, which is the authenticity of the, the grape variety and then also the great winemaking. And uh, Yeah, and for those of you who are, are tuning in, um, uh, maybe tuned in a little bit late, I'm talking with Marina Bagor of a uh, premium, um, a Croatian premium wine imports. We're tasting Plavitz Mali, which is a hybrid grape made from uh, essentially uh, the the Zinfandel. It was a crossing of Zindel and what was the, the other grape again called? Um, Dobrčić. Dobrčić. Okay. okay. Love that those words. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, um, and for, for those of you who want to see some of the wine offerings that uh, Marina and her husband are, are offering and are available, direct sales from them. Uh, there's a link under offers here to their website. You can go check it out. They're also available in stores in Massachusetts, soon New Hampshire, and of, um, in the state of Georgia. And, and soon, I hope, because I'm going to try to help uh, you guys get it in the, some shelves here in California as well. But, but certainly, um, and if you're watching this on the YouTube, you know, on the replay of this, I'll put a link in them below so you can find uh, mm -hmm. uh, premium, Croatian premium wine imports and go check it out because uh, this is really lovely. Um, you know, I, I might say right here, and I, you know, I hate to pull the trigger and nobody's holding a gun to my head, but uh, I'd say out of, the, out of the three, your little baby here is my favorite so far. Just uh, may maybe it, because we always love a story and that's kind of oh, what is, yeah. what is, you know, yeah. but it is a, a very nice. Yeah. yeah, it is a great, it's a great wine. Yeah. Um, but you've also been to, you've been there, you've tasted Plavitz before, so you are more prone to like more robust versions anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. But there is definitely room for all of them. And uh, um, um, I do love it. I mean, this one you'll notice I've actually opened. I didn't just carve in it uh, yep. like uh, the other one because we're going to have that for the dinner. So. <laughs> oh, that's, so, that's, that's, yeah. that's real nice. Awesome. Yeah, yeah so, I, I, and I've got... Um, um several other bottles that you sent me that uh over the next uh you know between now and the end of the year I'm going to be trying and I'll be sharing them um online through through my website or my social media channels maybe even on this um on this webcast so uh it's 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 really uh 
it, it's neat to explore and discover. You know, it's kind of my uh, that's in my DNA. Is is I, I want to um, I like adventure. Trying something new is something we all need to always keep open to, uh, and not always go to the same old, same old. Try something new. Uh, Croatian wine, um, and like all of the wines in 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 that area, uh, there are very interesting. This one um, is. As I say, the the this will just get you going. Um, and wait until you try some of those really nice um, um, po-ships with uh, the white wines um, okay. with great minerality, but certainly fruit. It's, it's like, you'll, you know, um, forget a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Get a po-ship and sit down on your patio and, and, and enjoy that. That is such a great wine. And I just noticed in the chat, people haven't been chatting too much, but Dario... Dario is a, a friend of mine who I met when I was traveling through Argentina. And um, he certainly, we were talking about Argentina briefly in this, uh, in this webcast about being the, the entry web. So uh, great to see you, Dario, or, or see you or see your words on here. Uh, and thanks for tuning in from, uh, from way, down, uh, way down south. I hope you guys are doing all well down there as well. I know that the, the outbreak has hit Argentina pretty bad and, and the economy is hitting bad. So I hope you, you guys are well. Um, well, wow, let's see. What what have I forgot to ask you about, Marina? Um, there's 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 so many things here, but I'm 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 just loving this uh, this case. Well, I think um, so. Uh, you were talking about how um, you actually asked me a question that I don't think I answered. Um, oh well, good. Let's, let's is, get back um, to that. Which is how are we finding the pandemic time? So mm. the timing was uh, was definitely strange. I mean, I I've started getting ideas about this. Over the last several years, as I certainly noticed that in Komarna region, the wines were getting to be better and better, some due to production, uh, some uh, due to the um, uh, uh, aging of the vines themselves, the plant, uh, the vineyards. Um, but uh, I started noticing that you can't get Croatian wines here when I, when I started doing Christmas parties for a Croatian community here, and I couldn't find them. And... Uh, hmm. um, it's been for years that people were asking me, so where can we find the wine? And now there's more and more people going to Croatia, including a bunch of friends of ours, um, who I think some are watching, who were with us uh, originally in the Komarna region, um, who uh, tasted the wines with us. And then we said, okay, well, let's work with this uh, appellation and try to do something together because even though we've been entrepreneurs and we, we've certainly... Win has done it on his own. I've been mostly an advisor and a mentor to um, uh, to companies. Um, I've seen a lot of companies fail, you know. So mm -hmm. one of the things that we had to, which I knew that, that we had to be uh, comfortable with is, okay, so what happens if we fail? And we concluded, okay, well, if we're starting to work with people who are friendly and we like working with them, the worst case scenario, if we can't succeed, is we'll have a big seller here. You know, that wasn't, <laughs> that, wasn't that bad. So um, we very quickly realized that um, people who we brought the wines to taste who are professionals, because, you know, we have a lot of background in business and how to position a product, whatever that is, you know. But yeah. uh, positioning a wine uh, in a wine market, you have to talk to professionals, obviously, because it's irrelevant what I think about. I mean, I always say it's kind of in my DNA, you know, that I like Flava Tamale. But yeah. uh, um, but uh, uh, what happened is that there was a phenomenal reception. So we said, OK, let's double down. We're going to do this much, much faster. And one of the things that we decided a year ago is let's start working on an online store which is not a trivial uh, thing to do because of various regulations, et cetera. Well, the it alcohol is, yeah. yeah, it's, 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 it's complicated. It's, it's yeah. really complicated, especially in the United States. Are you kidding yeah. me? I mean, we have, I think we are more complicated than anywhere. Um, yeah. And there's 50 states and each of the state here is bigger than Croatia, you know? So, so yeah. uh, that took a while to develop and um, we it actually opened it up just about this time last year but we didn't do any marketing for it because we were just not sure. You know, knowing software, it was very clear that there can be so many things that can go wrong. You don't want to market it unless you're absolutely sure it's going to work, particularly right, right. before Christmas. Um, and the sales in the restaurants, chefs loved it, um, which was great. The stores, the boutique stores that we reached out to uh, like it. And, and some of them keep selling it now. But of course, when pandemic 
um, a lot of that has actually stopped. So the good news is we had a, a whole new channel that already had started. Uh, so we said, all right, well, we need to, instead of trying to open up more new states with distribution, let's take this time to focus on the online. And we discovered that there were a lot of people who really wanted to do this. And, and they, uh, they find us because of the name Croatian Premium Wine. It's relatively easy to, yeah. um, to pop up on the, on the Google uh, uh, advertising uh, and, uh, uh, or the search engine. And uh, there are a lot of people who have been to Croatia who've been trying to, to get it. So we have had, I mean, we've worked very hard. We've put a lot of effort into marketing, uh, both time and, and money. And I have not had a day off since last early March, I think. You know, we've started by doing the fun things here, which was last uh, about a year ago here, which was doing all different kinds of tastings and from Boston Harbor to hotel to Salt Restaurant and Plymouth to, you know, it's fun. Total blast. Yeah. I mean, all of a it, sudden we need to deal with bureaucratic things, you know, so. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I had um, on the on the webcast Oliver Bauer, who's a German guy who decided to move to Rom Romania and he's making wine in Romania. And he's a, a great winemaker. And um, but he's like, hey, this is a lifestyle. I mean, you know, I, I'm, you know, he, this, yeah. this, yes, it's a business. I got to focus on the yeah. business. But I mean, he, he's very cavalier and just saying this is a lifestyle. This is, you know, how how can anybody go to a wine region? And and no one's ever going to say there's a this is a terrible wine region. This is right. like bad. <laughs> you know, I mean, nobody ever says that. So right. it's. It, it's so endearing um, that that there is this, you know, emotional quotient, if you will, yes. uh, to to being in in the wine business. And and me as a wine blogger and as a um, you know wine explorer, as I said, I'm working on my next book is going to be about wines from all of these places that we're talking about, and not necessarily not necessarily about the the wines, but about yeah, the yeah. people and about yeah. the lifestyle. And that is about the, the fascinating thing. Absolutely. Yeah. It it really is about you know um, I I met a young winemaker he's but 22 years old in uh, in near Orbich right at the end of the peninsula I, mm -hmm. I forget the name of the the town and uh, he's make in Postrup um, and so it's a Plavitz Mali and uh, yep yeah, and he uh, his father and grandfather actually his father was less his father was into running. Um, um, hotels and restaurants and his uh -huh. grandfather was the one who always made wine and they never you know they never bottled it to 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 sell it but the young kid you know like the like the generations that you know and in Kamarna as well or people are are saying you know let's this this is really good stuff and he has a a, a wine and you know the Palasek Peninsula there's that main road that that goes from Dingich all the way to Orobich and his vineyard spans the towards the coast crosses the highway and then goes up and it gets very steep and his grandfather for many years was always just picking all the grapes together, blending them, I mean, you know, yep. um, crushing them all together. And and the one 22 year old, um, Antonio is his name. He, he says to his grandfather, he's like, you know what? This, the, the berries up here are, are much smaller and there's less of them. And what about if we decide, let's, let's put those in a, let's crush them separately. You yes. know, so they came. To, so, you know, and that's not such a wild idea if you're in the winemaking business, but to the older generation that, that, oh, that yeah. was. For the older generation, that's a slap in the face. We've been doing it this way for centuries. How can yeah. you do it differently? You know? But so, no, that so, is huge because then he has a lot allocation. Yeah. 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 So right. so now he has one that that he's in his father's Yosip. You know, that's his uh, grandfather's name is Yosip. So he calls that mm -hmm. the Yosip uh, uh bottling so it's kind of like a premium right so and and then he has another one and 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 i love these kinds of stories so it's it's not you know yes the wine is it was it's very good it's very good and they they make i don't even know not even two thousand bottles from that little yeah. boutique winery but this is the these, these are the stories that you uncover and right. um you know that 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 i think for we coming back to that lifestyle that's why uh you know we we like we like wine, but we really love the story. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I do want to mention is that um, while, as I mentioned, when we started, we, we were absolutely uh, fascinated with to which extent 
we have um, enjoyed meeting everybody, hearing the family story, understanding what they're coming in. With Komarna, I knew most people, but I didn't really know the background of their winemaking. And, and, and some of that was new, obviously. Um, but um, uh, as we sort of expanded to working with other winemakers who we didn't know, um, I discovered that there are friends of a family I didn't even know who are who are uh, who have vineyards on Dingach, like uh, uh, Bura Mergudic family. My father has known Mara Bura for I don't know how long, and I don't even call her by her married name, even though she's been married for more than thirty years, and her <laughs> son is now running that. So you know, it's a it's a small country. What can I say? But but one thing that I do feel a lot of pressure about right now is not about us as a company. Because as a as a startup, we're doing we're doing well. You know, we are a virtual company. It's two of us. We work very well together. We've actually met working together. So, so it's been kind of a, a non-issue. We knew it was going to work that way, um, and we're growing at a pace that we're very comfortable despite pandemic. But I feel a huge pressure to help people from Croatia. You know, if you think about it, last year due to pandemic. There were not as many people there. So the wine that they normally sell on the ground was not sold. So how do you help them? Well, you help them sell more wine in the United States that, by the way, would die to get more of this wine. So the question is, how do you place it and, and, and marketing it? And that's why we have been putting a lot of effort, particularly since March, since we realized what this was going to be. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I was hoping it wouldn't last this long, but, but wow, yeah. we are where we are. So. Uh, yeah. Well, you, you know, I, I, I follow a lot of the, the wine industry uh, blogs, and newsletters and things like that. And, you know, so just to, just a little bit, just to have my, my finger on, uh, on the pulse of the industry to a degree, I'm by no means, uh, you know, in the wine business per se. But um, the the amount how, um, first of all, during the pandemic, how much more alcohol is being consumed. Is number one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and secondly, how the um, the growth uh, covered in many um, um, e-zines and things like this of uh, online wine buying um, oh, yeah. is is been great. So which which science which marks good for you guys, um, and, and especially as you get more more awareness and and get that that right. word out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, not, the not, hard. Not... Sorry. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. The hard thing is figuring how do you position the region and. Um, um, region that even though, as you said, it's the old, the new old country, you know? Yeah. So, the new old world. So, yeah. You know, the, 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 wine has been produced there forever. The wine is wonderful. So that's not an issue. How do you, in a, in a, um, uh, such a huge market as United States position the wine that is, let's face it, not cheap, you know? So, yeah. uh, by the time it gets here, by the fact that it's organic and that it's, uh, uh manual labor and, you know, and this and that, it, it ends up being a relatively expensive wine, uh, the premium side. And uh, uh, and that's OK, because they don't produce a lot. We just need to carve out a niche of um, um, uh, of people that will be interested to do that. But you need a lot of money for that, you know. Yeah. And, and as a startup, we don't have the money, obviously, to invest. So how do you go about it? Well, so that's why I'm very grateful that you're having me on and that people will actually learn uh, about Croatia as a region and uh, uh, we can only hope that the more people buy from us on the online store or in the uh, states where we are on the ground, uh, that the sooner we can be ordering more from the winemakers in Croatia to truly help them out. I mean, their sellers are full, they're struggling and they can't stop the production. You know, it's not like you can say, I'm going to lay off people and, <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, and, and wait a little bit, you know, yeah, yeah, the, the, the grapes are going to, the grapes yeah. are going to wait. <laughs> Well, you know, and, and Croatia has been hit, you know, although they, they were, uh, they've been hit especially hard, not, not only in, in, in that kind of lockdown where there's, there's no market for the wines, but in, as a result of just history, you know, wars yeah. and the rest of that industry in, in Croatia is fairly non-existent other than, than maybe winemaking and a handful of other things. It's really tourism is what's really driving, um, the, the business and 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 then there's the 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 brain drain that happens you know as being part of the yeah. EU uh, uh the only uh opportunities 
for the young people if they're not making their wine are, are in hospitality and 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 you lose a lot of young people to Ireland and Germany and things yes. like that because uh, they can find uh, jobs with higher wages in those areas which is which is sad yes. because it's it's also like coming back to what we started this about still you know holding on to your culture you know your heritage right. Right. and um, and I see that that's not unique to Croatia that's that's all no. all of these these countries of course but particularly Croatia being um, you know since 2013 one of the earlier uh, and the in, other than Slovenia really of the former Yugoslavia states uh, in the EU um, right. and not not to the full extent into the EU only um, um, part of that because you still don't trade in the euro yet in in Croatia so um but it's connect the kuna is connected to euros so in a way it's irrelevant you know but okay. uh people quote prices in euros like when i ask them what the, what is the the winemakers they, they don't give me price in kunas they or dollars they tell it to me in, in euros they yeah yeah so that, that always I, I don't pay them in euros but <laughs> yeah exactly that always frustrated yeah. me it's like look I'm, i've yeah. got kunas here now don't tell me how much this is i'm, I'm not going to be paying you in euros i don't even have any euros yeah. but th this is this is the the, the problem now that that tourism evaporated for much of that. Now, Croatia was one of the first uh, countries to let um, travelers from various regions uh, in the pandemic, including um, U.S. citizens, with yeah. um, with a, at least they had to get a negative COVID test. And right. uh, there was a certain number of days of not not two weeks, by all means, like some of these places. It was a few days uh, um, to to get that test and to um and, and you and could have, they were, I think, very smart. First of all, they did a major lockdown um, early in the spring. And so the country was, unlike now, um, uh, practically rid of um, a COVID. And, and, and I think that that was a really smart um, decision. Uh, I believe that Prime Minister said that he, um, that he, um, um, that it was a calculated risk that once they opened up the, the borders, that they're going to open them up and they're going to have people test before they come in and they need to quarantine until their re the results come in. Um, and that could have been sent via email. So they were very reasonable about that. And throughout the summer, it was actually going okay. But then uh, everybody started getting very relaxed about it. Right now, it's actually much worse than it was. But I'm, I have a full confidence that it's going to be back to where it was in the spring this year, that, that by the time that we come to spring, um, you mean the lockdown? The lockdown, yeah, they're pretty much yeah. uh, on a lockdown already. Now. I mean, a full lockdown. Uh, like when we see here, we say lockdown, but it's not really a lockdown. There's no way you can put, you know, cement barricades on on the road so you don't cross from one one state to another. That just doesn't yeah. happen in this country. Yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and and it's been so politicized here. Whereas, is, is, yeah. is in, so, in you know, in some of these other countries, they. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I remember reading in about uh, if it was Ecuador or if it was Peru, but, you know, you know, literally military out in the streets with guns, you know, and, and yeah. tanks prowling around. I think even in um, in, in Bucharest, they were, you know, yeah. they, were, they were they were rolling out the tanks in the streets. Like, don't you bet? I don't know if I'd be I don't know if I would be comfortable with that. But <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't be. No, that's that, that's what I'm saying. That's you know, you can never extreme. Yeah, that, that's the um, far extreme. Whereas here in the U.S. it's like, you know, hey. I, I, you know, don't tell me I need to wear a mask. I mean, you know, yeah. think about, you know, it's it's crazy. Oh, by the way, but, that's happening in Croatia too. Um, oh, is it? The, the same. It's not politicized in a sense that it's between the two different parties because we had election here. You know, over there, that's not the issue right now. But but people yeah. are divided equally, just like here, on the issue of mask versus no mask or whatever. But uh, I mean, I I had um, um, a long time ago. Um, I think maybe it was around the swine flu um, time that the Harvard Medical School, School of Psychiatry actually did a, a pandemic simulation that I participated in for a day. And oh, wow. uh, I, I was just, uh, it was mind blowing because it was very clear that the virus will be either handled or not handled according to what scientists and medical community can do, but the rest of it really um, is up to people how to do it. What I did not get out of that one day is to which extent people will be refusing to follow what epidemiologists say because they know what to do. I mean, they right. ran us through that simulation and we were pretending each hour was a day, you know. So I was, uh, because I was working in communications, I was part of the media. So I was the reporter walking around the tables and each table was, you know, like a mayor's office or whatever. It was fascinating yeah. to watch, but uh, I thought it was going to 
be solved with it, this particular one. I mean, it's, every virus is different, obviously. But um, yeah. uh, I sent to all my kids who were away, I sent all of them a packages of disinfectants. And, you know, the only thing I didn't do is send them toilet paper. But they were laughing <laughs> at me, you know. So. <laughs> but well, anyway, yeah. we are where we are. So hopefully it will get sold soon because Hope- the, the toll is, is high. It, it 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 is high and um and you know obviously there's promising news on vaccination but then yes. you know there's the double down uh there's as much as you have people who refuse to, to wear a mask you have people who refuse to get vaccine vaccines and yeah. you know the an, the anti vax crowd is uh is crazy but uh and then trust in the government and trust in in the institutions yeah. that that yeah. that's all kind of part of it but um. Yeah, I, I, you but know, we're have... getting there though. We're getting there slowly but surely. I think people. I mean, Massachusetts has been wonderful. I, I, I was just yesterday walking on the beach here. We live in um, a town called Revere that has this beautiful beach, um, and uh, there's really no reason to wear a mask on it, to be honest, because it's huge mm-hmm. and there's not that many people. But everybody was wearing masks. Well, um, good for them. There's a the family with kids who are wearing masks and playing with the, you know. Um, with the um, shells that they picked up and creating a sculpture, and I mean, it's just new new normal right now, and we're just gonna have to go through it. That's it. Yeah, a- absolutely. Well, I you know we've we've got kind of, we've kind of gone uh, about half an hour. You know, we try to get, although I never seem to keep these to an hour anyway. There's so much to talk about, and we had such great wine. You can tell the K 7s gone now at my uh, uh, my glass. I'll. I'll go back to the, um, I'm going to go back to the, um, the premium. Um, but, uh, so I, uh, it's been such a great, uh, hour and a half here that we've spent and I appreciate everybody who's sticking around, um, with us. This is awesome. Um, if anybody has any questions, throw them out there because what I'm going to do before I let you go, Marina, I, I, you know, we've talked so much about Croatia. We've seen some great, these videos and I love the ones the, uh, the Croatian tourism board does. And, you know, we, we, we talked about, um, you know, how Croatia was full of life with all the celebrities and the, 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 the athletes and the actresses and actors. Um, I, I wanna, I wanna talk about, I wanna show this video that talks about, um, Croatia and its, its culinary, um, and, uh, flavors and and it's and it's wines so uh, well we'll meanwhile if anybody has some questions throw them up there when the we'll talk about this on the back end Marina, and then i'll let you go sure. when you come to croatia you have to bring your appetite with you and you have to taste our food you have to try the world's most awarded cheese and enjoy wine tasting in any of our wineries. You have to surprise your taste buds with truffles. You have to eat here. Drink there. Enjoy everywhere. You have to come to Croatia. Croatia, full of flavors, full of life. Full of flavors, full of life. It's, it was short. It's a shorty, but a goodie. Um, I thought so too. Yeah. 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 Okay. That, that, yeah, for sure. Um, let me sh- flip on the chat here. Um, Puno Havala. What's that mean? That's what uh, Carol is saying. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, Havala. Thank of course, that's care. thank you. Yeah. What, thank what's you Puno, care. though? That Puno is uh, uh, they actually use it mostly in, uh, on, the, in, on the coastal part. Uh, it means a lot. Um, oh, okay. A lot. Puno. Not okay. Yeah. It's in the northern, northern part, not, not as much. But. Um, but I saw that Carol was from um, the island of Kirk, and my mom was actually born, born on that island, and that's where I learned how to swim. So it has a dear connection for me. Um, I would urge people who have not signed up on our mailing list to actually do so because we are uh, sending information to people about either uh, – right now we're actually doing a, a Black Friday week uh, sale, um, uh, but also as we have new wineries – that uh, we start working with whose wines we bring. Uh, we send people information about that um, and uh, following us on uh, Instagram and on, on Facebook also also helps in terms of creating the larger awareness about uh, uh, availability of Croatian wines in the United States. We uh, ship to most of the states, not all of them because it's a regulation issue, but uh, yep. hopefully some of those regulations will be changing in those states as well. So we are- and I noticed- to- 
Sorry. And I noticed on your website as well, you know, as we're coming into the holiday season here that you have a, a shipping um, promotion going on because that's always a, yeah. a tough thing. So uh, I think it's like $10 if you buy six bottles or something like this. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's $10 or a little bit under actually. Uh, for $9.95. And, yeah. then, and then, yeah, and then $1 for 12 bottles. And um, I think that as people start, I mean, we have almost 50 labels uh, right now. So what we've noticed uh, that people actually try a lot of them. Um, and, and then the second shipment, they actually pick the ones that they like and, and, and keep going with them. But you can pick and choose. And that's the good news about an online store. That, 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 that's great. And you have great diversity. You know, there's, there's great white wines from Istria up north as well. But I, I happen to be a, a Poship fan over uh, Grasvina. Um, but, uh, but I like them all, actually, you know. But, oh, now uh, you've caused a problem for me. The whole northern Croatia is going to be calling me. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, to uh, Carl to drink the wine. <laughs> well, we've got you know you know what that, we 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 will no that's it's it's only because when I I did get to um oh what's the um what's the southernmost city uh, it's like a big port uh, on the Istria Peninsula it's it's like almost Rijeka. just yeah Rijeka? yeah oh yeah. yes Rijeka oh great I just I did have some incredible I, there was a there's a wine bar in the in the old town there because they've, they've got the uh yeah. the old town where not a lot of vehicles can go in and um i wish i could remember i've got it written down of course and um it was a quiet night there and the owner of the place who spoke some english but he just lit, i mean we must have done like nine istrian wines and i just really got a great education thanks to him so yeah. that's like a warm part of my heart for sure yeah so, but, so uh, we um malvasia from istria and tehran are are both really really good and there are a bunch of other small small like um much more um indigenous to the particular area like one a wine it's called red rose of porridge not rosé it's called red rose of porridge which means that it grows really there and there's only 20 hectares of the whole um, variety planted so you know it, it's kind of that's great a, to be able to do that yeah that's like a lost varietal yeah that's awesome yeah. what's yeah. it's red rose of porridge is it uh, yeah and, and uh, what's the croatian a, word uh porridge is the name of a town uh oh. so so it literally translates from red rose of porridge. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And you so you have some time. of that. Yes, we do. Yes, okay. We do. So there you go. For for folks go, I the link is up. And if you're watching this on the um on the, the replay on YouTube, uh whether or not by the time you're watching this, the shipping special is on and Black Friday's way past us, but go to the website. There'll be uh, new updates, there'll be other other specials, I'm sure, and definitely some new wines. So if you haven't had a, a chance to um taste a Croatian wine, uh it's it's not that expensive. And with the shipping special, it's 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 a no-brainer to to do something different this uh this year for your holiday. Uh, meal, uh, try some um, wines. And for those of you who have, have visited Croatia, because it is hugely popular tourist destination, um, and you want to kind of relive those moments of uh, drinking great wine while uh, wandering the the weathered stones of Dubrovnik uh, stone or the uh, Diocletian Palace in Split, uh, just just go for it. Definitely. Yeah, you can do it okay. from your couch. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it looks like just as I, I had put up, have you ever been to Croatia? 20% of the people on the call today uh, on the webcast had been there. 80% have not. So there's another opportunity uh, for a lot okay. of us. Um, Marina, thank you. You have been so generous with your time and your wine. I, I thank you. I, uh, I can't wait uh, till we can do this face to face in a, in a different uh, era post pandemic. But and that um, would be lovely yes yeah <laughs> but we'll go yeah but we will definitely um um be be spreading the good word and the good wine of croatia Thank you thanks so to much on, be on behalf of all the winemakers in croatia i'm sure they will appreciate it and uh Zivili. 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 <laughs> okay i've got this little let's just do this this little uh I'm gonna dee 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 dee. okay just play that and uh Thank you for tuning in to The Journey's webcast. I'm Alan Carl, your host. Be sure to tune us in every Monday. The time changes depending on where we are in the world. This is Alan Carl, and where will your next journey take you?
Uh, Marina, thank you. This has been really fun. Um, I'm wishing you a happy Thanksgiving for you and your family and um, good luck on your business. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much. And uh, same to you. Stay safe. Okay. Stay safe. Cheers. Thank you everybody for tuning in.